At any rate, um, holy shit. Man, you know what? I don't know what the fuck you said, but I do know you're not paying enough attention to your girlfriend, and I think she digs me. There's no way that guy's got a girlfriend. <laughs> anyway, um, so this job that I do, at this point in my life, I'm reasonably sure that I was put here to do it. Yeah. Uh, a gift is one thing. Teachers are also really, really important. You need teachers in your morning with a talent. Um, I had some good teachers. Um, some really good teachers. Some of them were in school. One of them was here tonight. Yeah. Earlier, his name is George Chambers, and he lives right up the road. Yeah. He ostensibly taught me biology in high school at Holmes, up the road. But he, uh, I learned biology other places. But he, I learned a lot about country music. Because George had has one of the had one of the best country bands in this yeah. town for years and years, and he still plays. And, and uh, he was uh, him, and I had a drama teacher named Vernon Carroll. And the two of them knew what they were looking at, and they knew I wasn't going to be there very long. So they felt it was their responsibility to make sure that I got a hold of the right books and the right records while I was there. Um, Vernon gave me um, my first copy of The Free Will and Bob Dylan. I, my first Bob Dylan record was Highway 61, just because of my age. I'm not quite that old, so he, uh, he turned me under Free Will, and then that was and Shakespeare. I owe him for those two things. Um, Vernon teaches, last I knew he was teaching kids in the Rio Grande Valley um, theater and Shakespeare especially to, to, as a way of learning English as a second language. Which I think is a good place to start with English at Shakespeare. No doubt about it. Um, but I did drop out as they predicted and uh, I, when I was 17 years old, I met Towns Van Zandt. Uh, Towns, I followed him around Texas for a couple of years, and then it occurred to me that Towns wasn't ever going to lie to anywhere, and I could see him a lot of places in North America. So I went on to Nashville, Tennessee when I was 19, and because I knew Towns, I automatically met Guy Clark. Great teachers, both of them. Uh, very different. Towns was like, give you a copy of Bury My Heart with Wounded Knee and tell you to go read it. And then tell you to put the cap on the bottle or somebody come along and kick it over, which was useful knowledge at that point in my life. And um, Guy would show me how he laid a song out on the page. And he told me a lot of things I still use to see. He told me to write with a pencil and a big eraser. I sort of do that digitally now. I use a computer. But uh, I can't read my handwriting sometimes when I wake up in the morning. It's one of those little computers were sort of a godsend for me. He taught me uh, the songs aren't finished until you play them for people. And uh, to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite, and you know, that you can't overwork a song. Or if you do, you'll know. You know what to come back to. So, uh, now some of the things he taught me, I had to, we both unlearned. He taught, he taught me not to use a thesaurus or a rhyme dictionary, and then years later admitted that he had started using stuff like that. And I had to, I told him, hey man, I've been using the fuck out of a thesaurus and a rhyme dictionary for years. <laughs> need all the help you can get. Songwriting's hard, man. It's hard mental work. You need every tool that you can do. You can bring to bear. So, um, but at any rate, they were, um, I had good teachers. We lost Guy. What an asshole. You really think I'm not going to play that? I was talking, man. At any rate, um, we, uh, Guy died last year, and, uh, asshole. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it, we, we took it pretty hard, a lot of us, especially myself and Rodney Crowell, because uh, we were both teenagers when we got to Nashville, and Guy and Susanna and Clark kind of finished raising us. But, you know, Guy had cancer for a long time, like 10 years, and, uh, you know, I thought he would he would go when Susanna went, you know, some years back, but it didn't, he was too tough for his own fucking good, and he hung in, he wrote a lot more songs. Um, he did most of that by co-writing with all these younger writers, it kept him going, kept him kind of recharged his batteries, and I met a lot of them. Um, I did, I uh, was lucky enough to go see him um, more than I had in the years before that, the last year that he was around. I'd go to Nashville, so my mom's there too, so I'd visit my mom, visit Guy, whenever I had a few days, and uh, the, uh, one trip I I was stopped by the, this, he happened to be in a, in a rehabilitation center at the time, after a hospital stay, 
And uh, I was on my way to the airport, on my way out of town, and I just stopped by, I went to see him one more time, and, and uh, there were all these people there, and a lot of nice folks got together and said they were going to get him some barbecue, and there were 10 or 11 people in the room. And the barbecue was gone by the time I got there. I wasn't, you know, which I knew. I, did, I, I, I had other stuff I had to do, so I wasn't there for that part. But um, I just walked over to a guy and I said, Guy, how was that barbecue? And he looked around me and he said, If anybody else was listening, he said, Pork. <laughs> this guy was a Texan and he never lived in Tennessee for 45 years and he never accepted pork as proper barbecue. I'm kind of a polygamist when it comes to smoke to me myself, but you know, I, I, I do love brisket. Uh, he, uh, you know, so, so the last thing that my teacher said to me was pork. <laughs> I went to the airport and I went home. And uh, about three nights later, Rodney called me and said that he didn't think he was going to get through the night. And I couldn't turn around and run up there just then. And he, uh, but then I got a text the next morning about 6 a.m. that just said gone. Um, a little while after that, I got back, and we had a wake, and um, there was like 50, 60 people there, and uh, we sang a lot of songs, and we cried some, and then at about midnight, a few of us, me, Rodney, Sean Camp, a uh, uh, guy's girlfriend, Joy, and his son, Travis, who has since passed away suddenly at age 50, which is ridiculous, and blows my mind, because I knew him since he was a baby, but um, we, um, we all loaded up onto a tour bus with guy's ashes, and headed for Santa Fe, New Mexico, to Terry Allen's house. Now, Terry is a songwriter, but he's also, you know, his day job is he's a sculptor, and Guy had intimated to Terry that he wanted to be interred in one of Terry's bronzes. So now, we only have Terry's word for that, and I believe him. And uh, so that's where we were headed. We drove all night and all day the next day, and then about sunrise the next day, we pulled into Terry's house in Santa Fe, and right at sunset, most beautiful land-based sunset I've ever seen. I give Guy full credit for it. And um, we, you know, we had another wake. Amy Lou Harris flew in. Joe Ely, Robert Earl King, La Lovett, um, Jack Ingram. And we sang some more songs. And we cried some more. And then uh, I hung out for a couple of days. And when I got home, I made this up. <laughs> Goodbye, Michelangelo. Goodbye, Michelangelo. 